So we've got our store set up. However, our store doesn't do much as of now. Before we build on our Redux app, what we'll do is we'll set up our UI components. So coming here in the to-do app.js, we'll get rid of the text here. And what we'll do is we'll put in an add to-do component. This is a custom component, which will basically be the text input and it'll allow us to create our to-do. Since this text input is gonna be connected to our Redux app, let's put this into the containers folder. So here, let's create a new file and call it add to do. Here again, I'm gonna use my custom snippets to create a class and I'm gonna call it add to do. Here in the to-do app.js, I'll import the add to do here. From our containers folder, add to do. Once we save that out, we see our app is working again. Now here we have some container styles. I'm just going to get rid of those and we'll just leave the main container as a flex of one coming to our add to do. Let's start creating our text input. So I'm going to get into this view here and instead I'll put in a view with a style of flex direction of row on top here. I'm going to import in text input and I'm going to pass that text input in here. Let's give that text input a placeholder example, create new video. Next, let's style this. So let's give it a border width to one with a border color of a light gray with a similar background color. You can give any color that you like. Give it a height of 50 and a flex of one. So that it takes up the whole width. There we can see our text input is coming up. We're also gonna give it a padding of five so the text is nicely spaced from the edges. Also, let's give the parent element a margin horizontal of say 20. Now we're given in a flex directional row so that we can put in an icon along with it. We want the icon to be clickable. So let's import in a touchable opacity. Let's pass that in here. And a touchable opacity requires an on press, which for now we'll just say add it to do. Inside the touchable opacity, let's pass in a view. Let's style that. Give it a height of 50 as well so that it matches the height of the text input. The same background color. And inside this, we'll put in an icon for an add button. We get icons by default with Expo. So we can import in Ionicons from Expo vector icons. In case you don't get these icons and you're using vanilla React Native, you can install this dependency called React Native Vector Icons and you can use the icons from there. Now here inside this view, let's say Ionicons. The name we want is MD add. Let's give it a size of 30 and let's save that out. So there we're getting our icon, but it's obviously moved slightly to the top. So let's add some styles to fix that. Here in our parent view, we'll say align items, center and justify content center. We'll also give it a color and a slight padding. So let's say style. In the color, let's give it a nice red and let's give it a padding of 10. And there we see icon is looking much better. Now in our to-do app.js, where we had put in our add to-do, we have a styles.container with a flex of one. Let's also add a padding top of 40. And that spaces out our text input from the top. So we've got the first part of the UI created, which allows us to create the to-do item. Below this add to-do, we'll have another view, which will basically display our to-dos. For now, we'll leave that as blank, so now we have our basic UI set up. The next thing we need to talk about is how to actually create our new to do. So we know to create something, we need to have an action. That action needs to be passed to the reducer. But before we create the action, we need to decide, do we want to have one reducer to handle the complete state of the application? Or do we want to split that reducer up depending on which state it acts upon? So let's first talk about what states we have in our app. So if you we were not using Redux in this application, we would have a state object, which would be holding all our to-dos. The next thing we'd probably want is to have three buttons here. Clicking on one button should show all the to-dos, clicking on the other button should only show the active to-dos, and clicking on the third button should show the completed to-dos. So we'd probably need some sort of a visibility filter to toggle those buttons. So we'd create a visibility filter here, By default, we'll probably give it a value of say, show all to do's. So now we know we have two states that we mainly need to work on. The first one is the to do's and the second one is a visibility filter. 
So we basically need a to-dos reducer and then we need a visibility filter reducer. So here in our reducers folder, let's create our to-do reducer. So we'll say to-dos.js and let's call the second one visibility filter.js. For now, we'll just create empty functions here that just return our default state. So let's say const to-dos is equal to, it takes state as its initial argument. We'll set that to an empty array. And the second argument is the action argument. And here we'll just return the initial state. Similarly, in our visibility filter reducer, we'll say const visibility filter is equal to, we'll set the initial state to show all. The second argument will be the action. And all we'll do right now is return the initial state. So our reducer takes our initial state, does something to that state based on what action is passed to it, and then returns the state. Now both these reducers are in different files. We need to be able to combine these reducers together to be able to use them in our app. For that, let's create an index.js file here. And Redux is smart enough to know this, and they give us an inbuilt function known as combined reducers. Let's say import combined reducers from Redux. Then we'll import our to-dos reducer from to-dos and similarly our visibility reducer from visibility filter. To combine our reducers, we'll say export default combined reducers and then pass in our two reducers. This is as good as creating one single reducer. However, it makes it easy for us to work on our separate reducers. So in the next part, we'll go ahead and set up these reducers, set up our actions and build our to-do app.